If you tell people that they can indulge their um, sexual instincts without restraint, what you get is a lot of damaged individuals. They damage themselves and they damage others. It's not really a right-wing government, it's, it's very liberal and it follows the Labour Party maybe five or ten years behind. I think there needs to be more evangelism in this country. Um, I think the UK has a thing or two to learn from the US and this NatCon conference is a really good way to start with that. The point about our sex drives is I think that um, it's incumbent on all of us to try to restrain ourselves. I, I hear they're doing online uh, hate speech bills which will curtail freedom of speech. So um, well, I don't think that's good either. The fact the coronation was such a big event, we love sovereignty. It's a, very, it's a very undemocratic thing. Somebody's just born into a role, but actually it also gives us the opportunity to have somebody who isn't voted for. And that's quite powerful actually, I think. I think that uh, sexual restraint is something society has lost sight of. It's not a message that you hear being put to young, to young people. But sexual restraint actually is an essential component of a happy life. I'm here because conservatism needs a reckoning. We need to figure out what's going on in the Western world, especially in the UK and the US. What do you think is going on in the UK? I think we've lost our sense of identity. Um, in the US as well as in the UK, our sense of community, sense of home, what binds us together. Are you social conservative yourself? Yes. Why are you social conservative? Because I think that uh, there's a kind of moral chaos in society. Um, and I think that we have, uh, in a way, um, we're at the apotheosis of liberalism. Serving our traditions, our values, uh, the UK nation, uh, this national conservatism. Uh, it's about it's about being pragmatic and it's about holding one's morals as well. What are those morals? It's not really a right-wing government, it's, it's very liberal and it follows the Labour Party maybe five or ten years behind. It, it doesn't conserve. Is it, in what sense is it not a right-wing government? It's the Conservative Party. Rishi Sunak is the most conservative social the most socially right-wing Prime Minister we've had in a wee while. What, in what sense is it not a right-wing government? Uh, it, it's, it hasn't held the line on things like mass immigration. It, it, it seems to be partly enthusiastic about Brexit, but it doesn't seem to be entirely. Um, I don't know whether that's the government or whether that's many of its members of Parliament. And also, I, I hear they're doing online uh, hate speech bills which will curtail freedom of speech. So um, well, I don't think that's good either. If you look at what's happened in America, we don't want that to happen here. We don't want to end up with a polarisation where we can't have cross-party discussions. I mean, the Democrats and, and, and the Republicans have become so polarised. This is an attempt to bring people together, to bring peace. I think the UK has a thing or two to learn from the US, and this NatCon conference is a really good way to start with that. What is moral chaos? What do you mean about how does, What does that look like in Britain today? Well, to take an obvious example, family breakdown. Um, anybody who fathers children has a responsibility to those children. Any mother who has children has a responsibility to those children. Part of that responsibility entails maintaining a stable home life. And you can't do that in... Any do you disagree with the rights in abortion? Personally, I do. But then therein is the conflict with all ideologies of how much liberalism, how much conservatism, how much individual right, how much state control, uh, if any state control. And there lies in where I think principles have to come in and we have to make those decisions with morals. And we have to, we have to balance out the, the, these, these tough questions. But I hope that all parties across together can get, come, come together for the traditional values that we all love in this country, which I think, you know, the fact the coronation was such a big event. We love sovereignty. It's a very, it's a very undemocratic thing. Somebody's just born into a role. But actually, it also gives us the opportunity to have somebody who isn't voted for. And that's quite powerful, actually, I think. I love family values. I think they're really important. Um, I'd love to see my, um, my children growing up in a place where they don't get... Um, 
told off for not being different enough. I mean, there's a sort of weird, it's almost like you have to be the most left of everything to be, to be, you know, I'd like us just to be able to get on. And also religious freedom, you know, to be able to say what you like, to be able to have an opinion about what, be, it, be it whether you're Jewish or whether you're a Muslim or you're a Christian. I think it's really important, these freedoms that, that we're talking about today. Do we not have that? No, I don't think we do. I think it's become a very polarised culture. I'd argue that the UK is quite a secular country and it's, yes. it's trending towards that and will probably yes. become more secular. Yes. Do you think it's, poss it's possible to undo that? I think there needs to be more evangelism in this country. What's sexual chaos? Well, um, if, you, if you tell people that they can indulge their um, sexual instincts without restraint, what you get is a lot of damaged individuals. They damage themselves and they damage others. The point about our sex drives is, I think, that um, it's incumbent on all of us to try to restrain ourselves and to live within um, the tolerable limits. You know, no one's, no one's a saint. I'm not saying I am. But I think that uh, sexual restraint is something society has lost sight of. It's not a message that you hear being put to young, to young people. But sexual restraint actually is an essential component of a happy life. I'm a Christian, and so I believe that family is, is instituted by God for our good. Um, and so really strengthening um, traditional sexual mores um, is really important, I think, to bind all society together. Um, and that starts with the family and our local structures. In terms of um, sexual mores, do you mean in our sense of like the nuclear family or do you mean in the se sex of uh, the sense of gen uh, gender preference um all of the above especially traditional ideas of marriage and um, traditional sexual ethics that follow along with that the one thing i would change about britain today is uh i would like to see a proper so a proper conservative party a conservative party not only conservative in name but conservative in practice we haven't had that for a long time not the 13 years that the Conservative government has been in power. This hasn't been a Conservative government. We haven't had a Conservative government in my lifetime, I don't think. What's one thing you would change? I would stop the, the transfers of populations into the country from other, from overseas. People have all this non-platforming. If you go, I mean, I'm, I'm in Cambridge. You should hear the people that just can't. Uh, uh, one, one girl, for example, wanted to put on a film that was just to do with saying, I like being a woman. And it was kind of totally vilified as if it was some sort of, and it was, it was you know, it was totally ridiculous. We, that wouldn't have been, you know, I, I may not agree with the film, but I want to see it. It actually was banned from the place it was going to be put on. That's just one tiny example. The American style of evangelism is a big wing of the Republican Party. It is. What would that look like if that were to be tr imported into the UK? So faith is pre-political. Um, ultimately, it should inform one's politics. Um, but this starts with on the ground, people learning about what the gospel is and people's politics um, succeeding from that. Um, so it's not necessarily the aim of one or another particular political parties. It's the role of churches and people and communities and families.